What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Cost of D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we're going to be discussing from 1981, The Fox and the Hound, featuring the voice talents of Mickey Rooney, Kurt Russell, Pearl Bailey, Jack Albertson, Sandy Duncan, Pat Buttram, John Fiedler, Paul Winchell, Corey Feldman, and Keith Mitchell, who would go on to be better known professionally as Keith Coogan. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And as I said during the introduction, today we're going to continue through the Bronze Age, the Dark Ages, of the Walt Disney Animation Studios with 1981's The Fox and the Hound. And our movie opens up with a mama fox running through the woods with her baby. After the young red fox ends up being orphaned, an owl by the name of Big Mama, along with her friends Dinky the Finch and Boomer the Woodpecker, arranged for the young fox to be adopted by a kind old female farmer, the Widow Tweed, who eventually names the young fox Todd. Meanwhile, Widow Tweed's neighbor, a hunter named Amos Slade, brings home a young hound puppy named Copper and introduces him to his hunting dog, Chief. One day, Todd and Copper meet and quickly become best friends, pledging an eternal bond of friendship to each other. Now, as I'm sure you all know, foxes and dogs are supposed to be mortal enemies in the animal kingdom. So the fact that a dog and a fox were able to become friends right there just shows you the power of Disney. But they're natural animal instincts will definitely come back into play later in the film. Now, Amos begins to grow tired of Copper wandering off to play and as a result places him on a leash. One day, while playing with Todd outside of his barrel, Todd accidentally awakens Chief. As a result, Amos and Chief begin to chase Todd until they are stopped by the Widow Tweed. During a heated argument, Amos threatens to kill Todd if he trespasses on his farm again. When hunting season arrives, Amos takes Copper and Chief out into the wilderness with hopes that Chief will teach Copper everything he needs to know about being a good hunting dog. Meanwhile, Big Mama, Dinky, and Boomer attempt to explain to Todd that once Copper returns, they will become enemies. However, Todd is naive and insists that he and Copper will remain friends forever. The following spring, Todd and Copper achieve adulthood. Copper returns as an expert hunting dog who is expected now to track down foxes. One evening, Todd sneaks over to pay a visit to his old friend, Copper. Their conversation ends up awakening Chief, who as a result, alerts Amos. A chase ensues, and Copper is able to catch Todd, but he decides to let his friend go while diverting Amos. Chief then catches Todd as he attempts to escape on a railroad track, but an oncoming train strikes Chief which results in him falling into the river below and breaking his leg. Amos and Copper are enraged by this, and the two vow to seek vengeance on Todd for the accident, as they blame him completely for Chief's injuries. Widow Tweed realizes that Todd is no longer safe in her care, so she takes him to a game reserve, where hunting is forbidden. The first night alone in the woods is disastrous for Todd, but the next day, 
Big Mama introduces Todd to Vixie, a female fox, who helps Todd adapt some to his new life in the forest. Despite the supposed safety of the game reserve, Amos and Copper trespass into the reserve and begin to hunt the two foxes. The hunt reaches its climax when Amos and Copper inadvertently provoke an attack from a large, savage bear. Amos ends up tripping and falling into one of his own traps and ends up dropping his gun slightly out of reach. Copper fights the bear, but is almost killed by the vicious animal. And Todd ends up battling the bear until they both end up falling down a waterfall. As Copper approaches Todd, with him lying in the lake below, barely able to move, Amos appears, ready to shoot and kill Todd. Copper positions himself in front of Todd in order to prevent Amos from shooting his former friend and refuses to move away. Amos reluctantly lowers his gun and leaves with Copper, as Todd and Copper both share one last smile before parting ways. Back at the farms, the widow Tweed nurses Amos back to health while the dogs rest. And as Copper goes to sleep that night, he smiles as he remembers the day when he first met Todd. Our film draws to its close as Vixie joins Todd on a hill as he looks down at his former home as well as his friend Copper's home. This is another really, really cute story. A lot of people get really emotional at this one, and maybe it's just me, but I don't see the the, the super emotional parts of it. Sorry, guys. It is a cute story. I have seen this film a couple times. So it's definitely not one of the ones that I had never seen before. The next two days will be the other ones that I had never seen before within the Dark Ages. But The Fox and the Hound is a cute movie. But it's not on the same level as some of the other Disney films. Even within the Bronze Age, the Dark Age. You know, I talked the other day, the Aristocats, Robin Hood, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. All really, really good entries as, as a start to the post-Walt Disney era. But then once you get to the Rescuers, and then this, and then the two movies that follow, which granted I haven't seen... So I may change my opinion on them. I just feel like it really starts to get flat. And it's sad because you, you can understand why this era is called the Dark Ages for the Disney company by so many people, you know? The, the quality just wasn't there. Now, I know The Fox and the Hound has got a great following. A lot of people love this story. And, I mean, just, just the voice cast of Todd and Copper themselves, both young and old. I mean, you've got Keith Coogan and Corey Feldman when they're youngsters. And you've got Mickey Rooney and Kurt Russell when they're grown. Right there, you've got a stellar cast. But there's just something about Fox and the Hound that I, I just can't watch it with the same enthusiasm or as much as I can watch, you know, Pinocchio, Dumbo, um, Sleeping Beauty, Jungle Book, Aristocats, Robin Hood. Lady and the Tramp, like it just something about it just doesn't grasp me the way those movies do, and I can't really put my finger on it. The music again, very lackluster. 
none of the songs are that memorable. Maybe that's part of it. But the tale of friendship and the fact that even though the hound dog and the fox are supposed to be mortal enemies, and even though Copper vows vengeance on Todd for the accident of Chief, even though Copper still stands in front of and prevents his owner from killing his friend. It just doesn't hit me the way it does other people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When it comes to my review of the film, I am going to be a little bit nicer than I was with Rescuers because I have watched this multiple times. So I feel like I can give it a little bit of a higher ranking. Not much, though. I give it three out of five stars. Three out of five stars. It's one of the few films where I actually prefer the straight-to-DVD sequel over the original. And most Disney films and the straight-to-DVD sequels are horrible. Horrible. Most of them. But this is one of the rare ones where I actually prefer the straight-to-DVD sequel over the original film. Three stars out of five for me when it comes to The Fox and the Hound. Make sure you guys get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending for me. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever-popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network all the official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Dad's not always on wrestling. Stat Boy Sports Bar. Hashtag Stat Boy Approved. Hashtag Shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise for the Jeff Meacham Network. Three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from, along with Talk Wrestling, Meacham Mania, and more. And hey, it's summertime, so if you want to score yourself a cool tank top for those hot summer days and those hotter summer nights. You can get the Renegade J.J. Williams as well as Meachamania available in tank tops. Get out there, support us. While you're supporting us, do what that ticker tells you to do. Do you enjoy my content? Do you enjoy the hard work that I put into these shows to provide you with daily entertainment right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel? Are you guys appreciative of the fact that I subject myself to 100 degree temperatures in my garage studio here to be able to bring you guys daily reviews? If you do, then do what that ticker tells you. Go to that PayPal link. Send me a couple bucks as a donation. Keep in mind, everybody, I'm not monetized, so I'm not making any money off these videos right now. Only way I'll make some money is if you guys get out there, go to that PayPal link, send me a couple of bucks. If you don't want to send me any money, but you want to help me boost up my movie collection, go to that Linktree link as it scrolls by. Click on the link for my Amazon movie wish list. Grab me a movie off my wish list. When it comes and I open it during the movie mail segment of Renegade Recap, I'll give you a shout out live on the air. And then when I factor it in, 
to one of the monthly themes and can review it and give you guys another shout out and give you guys the credit that you deserve for getting out there and helping to support me. Tomorrow, when we're here right back on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, this should be a good one because it's another one I've never seen and I believe to date it is still the only PG rated effort in the Walt Disney Animation Studios filmography, The Black Cauldron. I am really looking forward to seeing this one and just immersing myself in this film because I've never seen it. I have people that speak very highly of this. So I am really, really curious to see what I think once I watch it. So make sure you're back here tomorrow on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another episode of Renegades Reviews to check out what I think of the Black Cauldron. To all my loyal viewers out there that joined me here today watching the premiere, leaving your comments over here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate you guys. All my loyal viewers that tune in later in the day, watch on demand, leaving your comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate you guys. I appreciate each and every one of my loyal viewers out there who tune in on a daily basis supporting me. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.